Greetings one and all. I hope you all had a fantastic week. Today on Karate Corner, we are back with our lovable bucket of fists and receding hairline that is Steven Seagal, and we are watching his 2009 movie, Driven to Kill, which it's a masterpiece, plain and simple. So let's get to this thing because I have a lot to say. This is Red Eye Reviews. Firstly, we know the movie is going to be a mess because its name is Driven to Kill, but when it starts playing, they call it Ruslan. Secondly, the cover of the movie says they took his daughter, so he's taken them down. Uh, spoiler alert, they never take his daughter in this movie, <laughs> so that, it's just not correct at all. But we start with the strangest conversation with, I guess, his apparent girlfriend. It's weird. I, I, I can't really explain it, so just watch. Like, seriously, you hide a metal spike under a cup and take turns betting until someone hits the cup with the spike? If you do it for me, I will do anything you want. Oh, oh my God. How did you know that? I didn't. And she got turned on by him smashing a cup. Girl, if that turns you on, you should go to a LAN party. Because them nerds be smashing Mountain Dew all night. So his ex-wife calls him about their daughter's wedding. And she uh, is apparently a vampire. Or she's like inches away from death because she is pale as hell. Also, we see Seagal has some groceries. You can tell they're groceries because of all the stuff falling out of the bag. But he heads to New York to go to the wedding where he does meet his ex's new husband, who's just a great guy. You must be Ruslan, the guy who writes the snuff books. I'm uh, Catherine's husband. I'm also a defense attorney, so I defend guys like you. I mean, the guys in your books. Yeah, there's no bitterness there at all. Okay, looking past the fact that they're talking about wanting to bang each other right in front of the new husband, Seagal was speaking Russian earlier in this movie. I didn't show you guys, but he was. No subtitles. Where did they come from? We don't know. And then we meet his daughter. So what'd she say? You're more beautiful than ever, which I know. Okay, pause. You are supposed to be her daughter? I googled these actresses because I was genuinely curious. That lady playing the mom is actually younger than the lady who plays the daughter. So let's just think about that for a moment. Also, her makeup kind of looks like she got it done backstage at a high school play. Oh, okay, well, you're old. Let's run some paint through your hair. It'll, you'll look older. Apply white makeup because old people are dying. Nailed it. I want you to meet my fiance. My name is Stefan Arbarn. Nice to meet you. I can spend a few moments with him and talk a little, you know. Stolte. Billet. Gangster Kakuit. Eh? Gangster? Oh, we. We forgot the subtitles, so we're done with those. It was just for that one scene. Okay, got it. So she is marrying this guy, whose dad is an ex-Russian mobster that uh, Seagal used to work for. Because Seagal is... I don't know if he's Russian. He tries to be Russian. The whole movie he tries. So he might be, but we don't know. Belong to my mother. I would love for you to have this. Thank you, Daddy. It's beautiful. Okay, let's get this straight. Your mom is younger than you and Russian. Your dad is Seagal, pretending to be Russian. And you are a southern belle from Mississippi? Thank you, Daddy. It's beautiful. Solid choice. Yeah, that's really, really good. So he gives his daughter his mom's old ring to wear for the ceremony. The new husband and dad look downright thrilled by the idea. This is the last of the flowers. Where should I put them, Mr. Goldstein? How the hell should I know? Ask my wife. Okay, if you close your eyes, it sounds like you're recording lines from an audiobook. I'll just play it with the black screen. Just listen. How the hell should I know? Ask my wife. Great for the page, bad for the screen. So Seagal leaves to get a drink. Meanwhile, these mobsters break in. They kill that one lady pretending to be an old person. She's dead now. And then they attack the daughter. Seagal hears about it, runs right back to the house... He casually steals a police officer's badge. I guess he I guess he wants to pretend to be a cop. Where are you from, Detective? The 2-6? Yeah. Like hell. 
That's my number. What the fuck is this? <laughs> you. Oh my god, great acting. For real, you sound like a character in a video game. Like hell. That's my number. But yeah, we learned that the wife is obviously, you know, dead. The daughter survives the attack, but she needs to get rushed to the hospital real quick. And then to further add to my theory that this is a video game, the other guys show up. Who's in charge here? I want to see my wife. Where is she? Where is she? I want to see Lainey. Is she? The body's already been removed from the scene. I feel like we're playing Skyrim right now. We're playing Skyrim and we're speeding up the dialogue options so we can get the conversation over quicker. It'll take time, but she's very lucky. Let's keep the luck going. If there's anything at all, you call me at this number. Hey, pal. Having a hard time uh, finding that Russian accent you've been trying for the whole movie? You call me at this number. So Seagal, he obviously wants revenge for his daughter's attack, so he goes to buy a gun. So what do you need? Sure shot? Hole in the door? Spray the schoolyard. Why did you slap the guns like they were a rib roast? Eh, 14 pounder. <laughs> they look delicious. But while there, those arms dealers get like a sketchy vibe that Seagal is a cop, so they just attack him. He absolutely destroys all of them as he, you know, is one to do. <laughs> Hey, Seagal, I don't think the props department wanted you to drop that one on camera. That is supposed to be a metal bar that you beat that man to death with, and it looks very foamy. It's a pretty delicate-looking steel bar. So Seagal then decides to meet up with the guy who was gonna marry his daughter. They meet at this bar. While there, the boy's dad shows up. You know, that Russian mobster Seagal used to work with, and they chat, but it's tense. I've come here for a reason, and that is, I feel that uh, you don't have to be a gangster to take revenge when someone kills your wife or your child. You and I, we're raised by the same code. So call, stop, stop. Breathe, buddy. <laughs> Reel it in, because you're, you're starting to sound very Jamaican, brother. Also, let's not forget. Oh, Ruslanji. He let you. Said you're never going to be... No subtitles, again. Like, for, for real, the only scene they felt the need to put subtitles in was for us to know that Seagal's ex-wife is still horny for him. That's it. Like, no other Russian conversation is apparently important enough for us to know what they're saying. But one of the things missing from the house attack was that old ring he gave his daughter. That's gone. So he walks into the first pawn shop he can find. The dude actually has the ring. Like, whoever stole the ring during the attack not only pawned it, but pawned it at this shop. We learn outside that the Russian mobsters have put a tail on Seagal, and he's watching him to see what he's up to in the city. The editor also learned that the tint on the windshield was far too much for him to see the driver's face, so he just gave it the old high school try and jacked the brightness up as much as he could. You look like you're in the middle of the process of getting beamed up onto the Enterprise. But Seagal did learn from the pawn shop guy that some local thugs sold the ring to him. So he goes to their hangout, and he just, he apparently knows exactly where these local thugs hang out. He storms into their building, he starts a fight. I'm still close. Down the hall! I don't want to have to ask this, but why... Are there so many refrigerators in this hallway? Are you storing a lot of raw meat or something down here? It's it's just an odd thing to see. That's all. Or someone paid you to do this. See no asshole. I wasn't there. Idiot Durak! You know what my next question is gonna be? Does he know you? And then if I like the answer, it was gonna be. Who sent you? We need information. Now we have fucking nothing. Zagal, please, man. Nobody's asking you to be Russian. You're clearly struggling with the accent. You're making my job today very, very easy. But then now the two of them go to find out more about these thugs, and apparently they know that they hang out at a strip club. Which, yeah, the movie has a strip club in it. Zagal has gone back to his old ways, 
I can't show you much of it because there's a lot of bare chest, but I'm going to try my best to show you just how insanely awkward this scene is. Is it supposed to feel like this? God damn it. I have never been so embarrassed for somebody else in my life. I'm not talking about the stripper. I'm talking about the other dude. Because you can see the realization hit his face that his career has officially hit rock bottom. But these thugs break into the room. Seagal fights them off. He gets in another great knife fight. If it isn't his longest knife fight, it's definitely a front runner. Yeah, that was a mess. But after this encounter, the police arrive, Seagal gets arrested, and while interviewing him, they ask him about his book he wrote. You know, the one that his weirdly young and super horny girlfriend from the first scene asked him about. You write books, Rusla? Hmm? Frankie J trembled, thinking of that hidden spike. And she quotes the same part of the book that the girlfriend did. Metal spike roulette. Honestly, baby... That was my favorite part of your book. Apparently, spikes under cups are just what that whole book is about. But the husband shows up. He's a lawyer. He gets him out of the police station. And then while they head to the car, we learn it's a trap. He was a bad guy the entire time. He hated the idea of his son marrying your daughter. Made a lot of bad investments, junk bonds mostly. And I had a lot of debt with Stefan's dad. So you decide to have them killed. So you wouldn't have to go to jail. Yeah. But this dude leaves. Seagal does what he does best. As the husband goes to leave, the fiance sneaks into his car, and he does his best Seagal impression. Only four people in that room heard Lady say that personal strength is valuable. What did you just say? Only four people in that room heard Lady say that personal strength is valuable. I I still don't get it. But they learned that, yes, indeed, the thugs, the guy hired to kill the wife and daughter, are this dude's Russian dad's mob. And that they have decided to now go to the hospital and kill the daughter once and for all for some bullshit reason. Like, they claim it so that the son can get tougher and become a mobster himself. But, I mean, really, it's just like, it's a bad attempt at holding the movie together. Let's be real. But they run off to the hospital... Seagal arrives with his little entourage, they move the daughter to that abandoned, secure wing, they handcuff the jerk to the bed, and the fiancé is watching the room. The mobsters show up, they disguise themselves as police to, like, get into the building easier, but it it doesn't even matter, because everyone's already evacuated because the fire alarm got pulled, and they have a ton of guns, and there's no security. So they didn't need to be cops, but, like, it's cool. And then you would think the next 20 minutes would be exciting. But I just, I couldn't care at all. I tried to care. It's just a lot of pointless gunfights. But my favorite part is where the main boss gets close to the room they're hiding in and the dad shouts out for his help. Mikhail! Shut up, motherfucker. (laughs) Yeah. That That made the whole scene worth it. One more time. Mikhail! Shut up, motherfucker. But finally... Everyone's dead. Seagal fights the big boss now. Oh, hey, look, the subtitles came back. Oh, no, they're they're gone again. Well, easy come, easy go. The boss is dead now. Everyone's safe. The daughter conveniently wakes up right as everybody leaves, but Seagal enters the room just so he can, like, have a moment with her. And then when the fiancé comes back, she's like, oh, shit. Pretend to be asleep again. I don't want to deal with him. Oh, wait. Hold on. Hold on. This is the exact same shot from the beginning of the movie. No, it's even better. 
It's another take of the first shot. Wow. That is freaking incredible. You didn't even need to put this in the movie, but I feel like you did it just for me. And so, yeah, thank you. Thank you. But the movie's over. And my God, it was it was so good. I can't wait to show you the stuff I pulled aside. So let's dive into Red Eye Reacts. Let's talk about it. Talk about what? Talk about old times. And how I want to kiss you so badly right now. Nah, I'm kind of a dinosaur. Yeah, nothing says Russian gangsters like guys named Dan, Brad, Ed, Rob, Mike, and Phil. And now I present to you a bunch of scenes of people standing around doing absolutely nothing. And now I present to you the best camera shots and edits I could find of the entire movie. There's another car across the lot. Now you're gonna. Okay, there's one more edit, but firstly, I have to tell you, this is my favorite scene in the entire movie. I'm going to zoom in a bit, I think, so that the YouTube copyright won't flag me, because I have to show you the whole thing. It's, it's just too good not to. How did that happen? Also, Seagal, stop looking directly into the camera. You've done how many movies at this point? But okay, that's everything. Thank you for watching. Up next, we have The Keeper, an LA cop who has retired and went to Texas to work as a bodyguard for a rich guy's daughter. She gets kidnapped and he hunts them down. Oh, so maybe the quote from Driven to Kill was supposed to be used for The Keeper and they just swapped them because they're bad at movies. That makes so much more sense. But it sounds great. Thanks again for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe. Uh, like it. That would be good. Hit the bell. Leave some comments. I love watching you guys chat with each other and your thoughts on this movie. Can you do a Russian accent? Even if you can't, it's still probably better than Seagal's. You know what my next question is going to be? Does he know you? But we will see you in the next one. And until then, stay happy and stay healthy.